Okay, we're gonna put a jack underneath the bike here and uh, I'll explain what we need this for here. In a few minutes, it'll become obvious. Just get the back wheel off the ground. So now that you got the bike supported, uh, pull the spark plug wires and uh, remove the spark plugs. What we wanna do is while the bike's of course lifted, we wanna put it in the, the top gear. So just kinda turn the rear tire and lift up on the shifter and just keep doing that until you, you can't shift anymore and you have it in basically the, the top gear. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use the rear wheel to drive the engine by turning the wheel. And of course you want it in the tallest gear because it's the easiest to turn the wheel and actually overcome the engine friction. So uh, we'll go back to the other side of the bike here and uh, we'll get ready to uh, remove the push rods. So in this procedure here, we're gonna show you how to remove uh, the push rods. And the reason why you would wanna use a bolt cutter versus pulling the top end off is it's a lot more labor to remove all these rocker boxes um, so that you can actually move the push rod up. So what we do is we use a bolt cutter and we, we lift these push rod tubes and we cut these. There's a retaining clip here at the top of the push rod. You just stick a screwdriver in the little slot there and you kind of pry it out and uh, remove all four of those. Um, there's two in the front, two in the rear. Okay, now we got the clips out. We can lift these push rod tubes up so we can see the, the push rods becoming exposed. Um, also, uh, it's not a bad idea to remove this connector so that it's not in your way while you're working on the push rods. And there's just a squeeze tab on the back. Push down on that and uh, slide the connector off and you can just leave that hang. Um, no big deal there. We can push these two up. Okay, so before we cut these out, we're gonna, it's nice to get these up and out of your way. So we got a simple little device here, a paper clip and a rubber band. And you just wrap that around the rocker box bolt to hold that up. And we do the other one here. Keep them up and out of the way so we can move the uh, push rods. So now what we do is we, we rotate the rear wheel and we watch the push rods move. Okay, and when these two, this one's coming down, okay, that would be the intake push rod over there. And this would be the exhaust. So the intake closes. Now we're coming up on compression. That's why the spark plugs need to be out so it makes it easier to turn. The exhaust opens. Exhaust closes and now you're going to see the intake start opening right after the exhaust closes. See them both moving right there? I'm rocking it back and forth. That means this cam, the rear cam is on overlap and then uh, consequently or as a result the front is on the base circle and so what it means when it's on the base circle is that the cam lobes are not pushing up on the push rods which in turn compresses the spring and opens the valve and so what, what we have in the front cylinder now that the rear is on overlap or both of them were moving is we have both the springs and the valves are completely closed. So we have less force on this push rod so that when we cut it, it doesn't want to, of course, compress and come shooting out of the motor. So the next step here is to basically cut these two front push rods. And you want to kind of stay as, you know, high as you can so that you don't mar up the tappet block and whatnot. And we just Cut it out like so. Make sure your cutters is all the way through. And there you have it. Can you explain why we use the bolt cutter? The reason why we use a bolt cutter is um, it's, it's the cleanest way to cut a, a push rod. If you, you tried to use a die grinder or something, you'd have a mess. Intake, being very careful here. And you can see how that push rod wanted to, uh, you know, still wanted to move when it uh, collapsed. And it wants to, of course, you know, bend in the center when you go to cut it, which if you had the spring open or if you were up on the lobe of the cam would not be a pretty thing because it really wants to come out of there. Now what we're going to do on the rear is we're going to rotate the motor so that these two lifters are, are moving. And how I do that, I, I basically just use my fingers in there and I feel when they're moving. Um, so obviously I reach back here and turn the rear wheel. I can see the 
exhaust coming up, my fingers going down, and now they're essentially both moving. As I rock the wheel back and forth, I know I can cut the rear push rods out. Sometimes a bolt cutter don't quite get the job done and you have to get in there with the pliers and kind of finish the job or re recrimp it with the uh, bolt cutters. And of course the push rod tubes and and the uh, push rod will get discarded as well as the retaining clips because uh, with the SNS push rod kit, whether it be the standard performance push rods or the quickies, uh, they're supplied with uh, new tubes and retainers. To uh, the reason why you get new tubes is because this tube is so long from the factory that uh, you don't have enough room below it here to get at the adjuster and so we have some shorter tubes that we supply with our push rods to allow for adjustment. Now we're going to remove the uh, the cam chest so that we can install a cam. Um, there's two methods of, of, of supporting the tappet and you need to support the tappet so that when you pull the cam chest out they don't fall in um, and get in your way and of course you want the tappet in place when you put the new cam in so uh, one method is the uh, paper clip uh, this used to be on those little binder clips and I just basically pull it out of the binder clip and we grind the ends here so that they're sharp and uh, you, you stick them in the tappet like that and you catch the edges. So I'm going to stick these in uh, like so and catch the edge of the tappet and it just locks in like that and, and the force that the spring pushes out on the tappet is enough to keep them from falling down. Okay so to remove the, the uh, cam cover you need a 3 16 Allen wrench and uh, you just crack all these uh, Cap screws loose. Keep it going. So you can see uh, that I got an oil pan under here because when we take the last bolt out, um, of course the cam cover could break loose and we're going to get some oil splash out of the uh, the cam chest. So. I'm at the last bolt here, and this cam chest is actually, your cover is going to stay tight, which is a good thing. Oh, there it starts to come loose. So we can get these bolts out of here, because I'm probably going to drop them. And just kind of let it, leave the bolt in of course, but uh, let the cam chest drain. And uh, we're going to hang on to those bolts because we're going to need them to go back together. Take the last one out, but uh, there's the inside of the cam cover. Um, next we'll take the outer chain out, uh, remove this bolt and this bolt, and uh, we'll get that taken apart. Before we go to take those loose, we're going we're gonna to put the bike back down on the ground. Remember, it's in gear, so... Um, by putting the rear wheel on the ground, we effectively stop the wheel from spinning, and that, of course, is going to stop the motor from turning over. And uh, use a 9 16 uh, for the top bolt here. And you, can, you heard the thing uh, engage, so it's not going to want to rotate now. And we just crack this bolt loose and uh, switch to a half inch socket for the uh, pinion gear bolt and get them both cracked loose. And now we can just take them on out. Now this, uh, this install is going to be a set of chain drive cams and so all of these, uh, this bolt, this chain, these sprockets is all going to get reused. Uh, the cam plate, the tensioners, everything here is pretty much going to be reused.
okay, to remove these. Um, sometimes you need just a little bit of help on the, on the pinion, but you can see there's just splines in here. Um, so it's kind of like a, a slip fit. You can see it wanting to rock, but the, uh, the pinion gear here needs just a little bit of help. And I'm not prying very hard at all. It's just just enough to uh, get it to start coming loose. All right. The next step here is to remove six cap screws that hold the cam plate on. You got one, two, three, four, five, six. These four here are to retain the oil pump to the cam plate, so we're not going to take those off at this time. We just got to take our three sixteenths Allen again and. Uh, Take these out. One thing that you're going to find too is, is this bolt here actually interferes with this hydraulic tensioner assembly. So you can, you can crack it loose, but you can't quite get it out without, you know, forcing it. So. I just turned it a little bit loose there and then we'll move on to the rest of them and we'll kind of ease that one out as the plate comes loose from the, the crankcase. Now these bolts are all the same length on, on the later models. Some of the earlier models had longer bolts. Uh, here and here because there are dowel pins actually behind here and so they need an extra longer bolt because the dowel pin takes away the threads in the case so um, something to note if you're working on an older model and so you can see the last bolt I got going here is the one that was interfering with that hydraulic tensioner and it looks like it's going to come out without the cam plate forcing off so now uh, essentially the cam plate's loose you can see it's it's ready to come out and I got oil coming out because of course I've opened up some passages as I've pulled that plate away from the, the crankcase. So I'll let that drain here a little bit and uh, pull it out. Now if my tappets are supported right they won't fall in. Um, it really just pulls out. Okay, so there's your oil pump and your suction side of the pump. Um, so what we're going to be keeping here, of course, is the oil pump, the cam plate, uh, the hydraulic tensioner on each side, and then uh, we'll discard essentially just this cam and this cam here, and we're going to reuse this chain. Okay, so the next step is to uh, remove the cam bearings. Um, this, this tool is an expandable um, mandrel type of a blind hole puller, if you will, and it just inserts in the cam bearing. And uh, it's important that you use the right tools for this because uh, it's, it's very easy if you don't have the proper tool to ruin the bearing. And, and if the bearing comes apart while you're trying to remove it, it can of course fall into the, to the crankcase. And uh, that means uh, the whole motor's gotta come out and be separated so that you can get the, the debris or the parts that fell in out. So make sure you have the proper tools. This particular tool is, uh, is a Kent Moore tool. Um, a Harley Davidson tool. Uh, there are several manufacturers of tools. Um, you can get them uh, many different places. So, we put the uh, support plate on here. It just has some uh, thumb screws to hold it in place. It always works best if you uh, put the support plate on. Okay, we got all them tight. Now we need a uh, thrust bearing and a nut installed on there. Thrust bearing is just to make it easier to turn. So that as it pulls the bearing out, it reduces the friction. And I just install that loosely so that 
I can feel the tool center on the bearing when I tighten it down. Uh, this tool takes two seven sixteenths or inches, uh, one to, to hold it from spinning, the other one to expand the mandrel inside. Just making sure I'm centered in the bearing. That's good and tight. Okay, so now I'm just tightening the tool and uh, it's pulling the bearing right out of the crankcase bore. Okay, so now that we've got the old bearing out, uh, we're going to go ahead and open up the hardware kit, uh, installation kit from the SNS packaging, and uh, we get out the, the new bearings. Uh, the difference between the stock bearing and the SNS bearing is uh, this bearing has a cage in between the rollers, and uh, there are less rollers in there, and so uh, this would be more uh, supportive of the, of the cam. Um, and as well compatible with the materials that the cam are made out of. So we, we of course, anytime you're installing a cam, whether you have zero miles or 100,000 miles, we still recommend replacing the, uh, the bearings. So what we have here is the uh, cam bearing installation tool. And these are the uh, brand new bearings from s, &S. Uh, They basically just slide over this uh, mandrel or arbor, if you will. And uh, this is the same plate that we use to uh, remove the bearings with, so we have a different arbor that threads in here to install the bearings. Okay, so when you're getting set up to do this, important thing to note is that there are letters and, of course, like a part number on the outside of the bearing. You want that to be on the outside or facing out as you press it in because if you look at this cage and bearing close, um, what you'll see is that this is thicker and stronger than the inside so you don't want to push on the on the side that isn't supported so you always want to have the numbers out that's the important thing to note here so I got them both on here um, I've adjusted the length uh, of these so that the bearings when I slide this in here they can't fall off and of course um, get what uh, lodged down in the cam chest so I just put the bearings on there slide everything into place and put my thumb screws on Um, one thing too that I guess is important to note here, this bike only has 1,800 miles on it and we're not going to replace the tappets, but uh, uh, I guess I would recommend that it, if you have a bike that's around 30,000 miles or higher, uh, replace the tappets. And uh, the tappet replacement is, is really simple, I guess, the, you would just take these four screws off these tappet covers, remove the tappet covers, of course you'll need a gasket for that, and uh, there's a dowel pin in here that retains the, the tappet from spinning, that just lifts straight out of there, and you pull the tappets right out the top, put the new ones in, put your dowel pin back in, put on your new gasket and your four cover screws, and uh, that's the only thing in addition to what we're doing here uh, to replace tappets, so really simple process. Of course, you would want to use assembly lube when you put the tappets in and that kind of stuff, as we're going to do here when we put the cams in. So now I've got my plate on, and uh, basically you just run these two mandrels in. It's not a bad idea, of course, to visually look inside here to see that they are aligned with the bores. And this looks good here, so I'll just take my wrench and run them in. Now, the arbor on the end of this um, threaded piece actually has a step on it so that it puts the bearing in roughly 20 to 30 thousandths past flush and so it's got a predetermined install uh, height if you will in the case to get that bearing centered on the cam journal and now it's obviously seating because it it's getting quite a bit tighter than what it was going together so I just break it loose so it's not pushing on there and I go on to the next one So there they are installed. So 
uh, we've we've taken the Loctite that was supplied from SNS out of the packages, and uh, they supply the snap ring uh, and the two cams. Uh, these are the Easy Start cams. Uh, they have the compression release trigger built right into the camshaft. Uh, both of them centered on the exhaust lobes of the cams. And uh, this particular cam is a uh, 585 um, cam, chain drive cam. The procedure we're going to do now is uh, install these cams in this cam plate. So we need to remove these two stock cams and install the SNS cams. Um, some things that are important to note here. Uh, this is the cam plate that we removed uh, earlier. And uh, this O-ring that uh, is on the suction side of the pump, if you got a bike that's got any amount of time pretty much, I, I, this bike only has 1,800 miles on it, I'm not going to put this O-ring back in there because the experience is that the O-rings will get hard um, with a few heat soaks. And once they're disturbed and you put them back in, um, you're going to go back in the cam chest because what will happen is that o-ring will not make a seal on this pump and uh, you've disturbed it by moving the cam plate ever so slightly and that o-ring won't seal and your your flywheel cavity will fill up with oil and the bike will not want to rev up um, it'll just give you nothing but trouble so for a three cent o-ring or whatever it may be even if it's a buck fifty it's worth replacing just to not have to go back in there okay so enough about that um, another thing too is when we pull this off there's this washer that you, you have to of course keep track of. We're going to reuse that washer. Um, so pull that off of the, the rear cam and set that up by your outer chain drive. Um, so to remove the cams we need a snap ring pliers um, and we just basically insert it into the snap ring here. Expand it a little bit and pry it off of there. Now there's a thrust washer as well behind this cam, so now that I've got that, that uh, clip off of there, and of course we took the sprocket off of here, these cams are free to come out of here. The only other thing of course is this hydraulic tensioner. Um, we could slide them out of there, but this tensioner is going to uh, essentially eject from the, the body. So use a 3 16 Allen, and you basically just crack these two loose, take out, take out at least one of them so that the hydraulic body can, can swivel on the other screw. I'll show you that here in a second. See how it swivels out of the way? Um, now, of course, this, this piece here is free to come out, and you can set that aside for now. We're going to need it later, but you can take that bolt out if you want, but you don't need to. So I'm just grabbing both the cams and you know sliding them out evenly from the cam plate. Okay, now one thing that's probably worth doing is, is of course, here's the orientation of the chain. This is the outside, that's the inside. It spun this direction. It's probably good shop practice to, to put something in the same direction that it was before. Probably not necessary, but that's what we're going to do with our install. So I'll just ease the cam out of the chain here. Okay, noting which is the outside and then right away I'm just going to grab the other cams and insert them in the chain. Okay, so we'll stick the rear cam in with there and uh, as we do that we want to make sure that this dot aligns with the other dot so that the timing is correct. And you can see right there I'm off a tooth so I'll just shift the chain around as I go here and now those appear to be aligned. Okay, now that we've got the timing marks lined up uh, and we're ready to insert the cams in the cam plate. I'm going to put a little, little bit of assembly lube on the outer journals of the cams. And the boards are still plenty oily on this particular assembly, so I'm not going to bother with that here. And now I just basically need to insert the cams into the cam plate. Making sure, of course, not to let the cams come out of the chain and then, you know, come out of timing with each other. So we just ease them in. Now that we've got the cams in, you can see that these the two dots on the outside of the cam journal line up. Um, so they're in time. 
and uh, we just assemble things in reverse order. Here's a washer, you can put it on either direction for the front cam. And uh, discard, discard the old snap ring and install the new one from SNS. The snap ring is uh, unique in that it is kind of a taco shape to it or, or a potato chip shape. Um, and so what that does is of course preloads the cam uh, into the cam plate to um, retain oil pressure because this, this cam, both front and rear cam journals, are fed with uh, oil from the pump. So I'll make sure it snaps into place. Looks good, everything's tight there. Uh, now we can put the uh, hydraulic tensioner back on the other side. Uh, just pop this in there either direction. Could go this way or flip it either way. It's fine. And uh, we need to use the Loctite supplied, uh, blue Loctite on these screws. Put a little on there. Install that screw. Um, might as well pull this one out. We're going to have to have Loctite on it as well. Now, if there's still oil in the tensioner, of course, it's going to be a little hard to compress, but it, it's uh, certainly doable with your fingers. Push it in and get it started and then run it down with your wrench and then we'll torque them up to the spec. Torque wrench here. Okay, that's how we get the cams in the cam plate. Okay, what we're doing here is we're checking uh, pinion shaft runout. Um, the Harley spec in the 2010 manual that we have is uh, zero to ten thousandths. Um, this one here is clearly at around seven thousandths. And so we're within spec uh, for the, the Harley chain drive cams. Now, if you were gonna install a set of gear drive cams, you certainly wouldn't wanna do it in this bike, or if you were going to do it in this bike and you had your uh, heart set on a gear drive set, you would have to remove the flywheels, a very costly procedure, and, and of course correct the pinion shaft run out. Um, there's numerous ways you can do that. You could just retrieve the wheels, but of course if they, they are out of spec now, the chances of them coming out of spec again are, are pretty high, so you would want to either weld the crank pin, plug it, whatnot. But uh, for our purposes of installing a chain drive, this is perfectly fine. It's within spec, and so we can proceed with a cam install on chain drive. Uh, we're going to put the cams and cam plate and oil pump back into the uh, crankcase. And so we're, we're going to use a new O-ring on the oil pump suction side. Okay, and it's good to get a little bit of a lubrication on there so that it, it will slide in um, freely. And before we put these in, we want to put some assembly lube on the, the journals and uh, as well in the bearings here. So, throw a little bit on there. Roll the bearing around and make sure you distribute the oil well. So when we start it up, we have oil. And since uh, we, we rotated the motor, uh, since we pulled this out, we have to look kind of through the pump here and you can see there's flats. As you look through there, there'll be flats of the pump that drive on these flats of the shaft. So we need to get that shaft aligned and we just turn the, the motor ever so slightly back up a little bit, back up, a little more, right there, okay. So I'm kind of eyeballing right down the bore of the oil pump and just slide it into place. A uh, couple things to make sure of, of course, these O-rings are in place. Um, you can replace them as well. Um, not so much trouble with them. This thing doesn't have a lot of time on it. It's not as critical, of course, as that O-ring back there. So, slid into place well. The tappets all uh, are above the cam, so everything went in nice. Now we just put in the, the five bolts here to retain the cam plate to the cam chest. Again there, we need to install them with uh, blue Loctite.
torque in this too? 96. Okay. Before we put the uh, the chain on, we need to check our our sprocket alignment. And so, what you do is you put the sprockets on uh, without the chain, and uh, put the bolts in so we draw everything up tight and it isn't going to be disturbed by us checking it. And just put them in snug. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take and put a straight edge on the sprocket and lay it across the other sprocket and see that we have alignment within the specified amount. And this of course is all in the Harley manual. So both of those are, are snugged up and now we'll go get a straight edge and check it. Okay, so we got our straight edge and what you're looking for um, is a 10 thousandths difference between these two. That's the max allowable. If it's more than 10 thousandths, you're gonna require a different spacer behind this sprocket. So they have different washer thicknesses. Um, I believe in, in uh, 5,000 increments that uh, will get you there. Now when I set this on the sprocket, I can't get my 10 thousandths in here. Now if in this case this sprocket is out farther than that one, so of course I want to I want to align my straight edge with this sprocket. Of course if this one was out farther I would align it with this face and then use my feeler gauge down here. So in our case here, we have uh, less than 10 thousandths and of course I'm clearing that sprocket. So we're within spec, we can continue to, to assemble. We'll pull these back off, put the chain on and torque them down with the red Loctite and move on. So next we have the uh, outer cam chain assembly. Make sure that the uh, cam washer is still in place. Um, timing, this flat in line with that line and of course your timing marks on your chain should line with the two bores. Uh, when you're done here you can put a straight edge on here but of course this uh, rear cam has a missing tooth if you will on the splines and you have to align that with the missing tooth in the sprocket. Um, hopefully you can see that down in there. Yes. And uh, let me just align that. Before we get that in there, we got to get our hydraulic tensioner in place. And sweep this in here. Push the hydraulic tensioner back. And it should slide right on there. Like so. Uh, install the bolts with the red Loctite uh, that was supplied with the kit. You could be pretty generous on that one because uh, there's no oil passages to plug or problems of that nature. The uh, pinion, it's not such a bad idea to uh, clean the bore because uh, it's got oil in there and oil of course can contaminate your uh, your Loctite. This is uh, Loctite 262. And put some on the bolt, put it in. So now we're going to torque the uh, rear cam and the pinion bolt. Uh, we have a locking tool here that we could use to, to hold the thing from spinning. Um, as well, you could leave it in gear and put the rear wheel on the ground and hold the rear brake to tighten that if you have an assistant or it's kind of tricky. You can do it yourself with your elbow, but um, we, uh, we'll just torque them up here. Again, it's a half inch for the pinion bolt and a 9 16th for the rear cam bolt. And there they are.
are, torqued on. Uh, we'll move on, I guess, and put the cam cover gasket on there. We gotta clean, clean the gasket surface good so that the gasket can seal. Use a little brake cleaner solvent to uh, on your rag to get it good and clean. After you got the gasket surface clean, put on the new gasket. And of course, uh, clean the cam cover, get all the oil out of here and uh, get it ready to go on so that everything's dry. And put it on here. A little Loctite on all your bolts and torque them just back. Just stagger it, uh, you know, not so it's even. There's actually a bolt torque sequence in the manual. The important thing is just to not walk straight around it. Kind of increase the camp clamp load evenly. And then when you get towards the end and everything's torqued, you can kind of just walk straight around. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, push rod adjustment and before we do that uh, I want to talk a little bit about the I guess some of the anatomy of the lifter or give people a visual on what you're actually doing when you adjust a push rod. So what we have here is a, a stock twin cam lifter. Um, it's been cut away so that you can kind of see the internals. Um, basically you have uh, a spring, uh, a one-way valve up here in this this piston body and then you have uh, the cup for the push rod to fit into in the top and a retaining pin. Okay, and so uh, what you're doing when you're adjusting the push rod is the gap between the piston and the bottom of the lifter, uh, you're, you're closing that gap. And so for the lifter to do its job and adjust uh, or compensate for the growth in engine height and as things warm up and change distances, the hydraulic lifter, of course, this travel has to change and, and take all the valve lash so that your valve train is quiet. Um, so what you're trying to do is to give this the maximum adjustment. You want to adjust this piston so that it's in the center of that travel in between this distance here. Well, if you measure this with the calipers, it's roughly 200 thousandths of an inch. And so what we want to do is, is adjust this down about 100 thousandths of an inch. So uh, an s, &S push rod has 32 thousandths or 32 threads per inch. So one revolution gives you 32 thousandths of length in the push rod. So as we try to achieve 100 thousandths, um, we would want to go one turn at 32 thousandths, two turns at 64, three turns at uh, uh, 96, and then just over three turns is going to give you that 100 thousandths. So what we generally refer to uh, for adjustment on a push rod is uh, of flats. Um, anytime you're talking in terms of flats, you're, you're essentially referring to a six-sided hexagonal shape. And so you stick a wrench on a set of flats because a wrench is basically shaped like this. And so you turn it once, pull the wrench off, and turn it to the next flat on that hex. And so we, when we turn it 20 flats, we would do that 20 times, okay? or um, sometimes they refer to that as uh, two and a half turns or three and a half turns, that kind of thing. Um, so it can be termed both ways, either flats or in, in the number of turns. So um, another topic that we should cover 
would be the limited travel spacers. Um, SNS has a product called the LT kit. It's a limited travel washer. What this washer does is uh, basically turns your hydraulic lifter into a solid lifter. Um, you could take a set of hydraulic lifters out of an engine and generally speaking putting it a set of hydro or solids in their place would of course not give like a hydraulic lifter will. And so the, the advantage there is that you, you don't have the collapsing of the lifter uh, under high RPM. And so the LT kit of course is going to maintain uh, valve control and, and uh, not collapse the lifter at high RPM so that we get the benefit of uh, improved timing. So generally speaking, if, if you were to put a, high, a solid lifter in place of a hydraulic, you would, you would certainly achieve more horsepower, and that is the whole idea behind the LT kit. So what effectively happens when you put this in this lifter is that 200 thousandths I was talking about becomes uh, roughly 100 thousandths. And so when we adjust uh, this lifter down to that washer, we've, we've now raised the floor up and taken away some of this travel. There's still, of course, oil inside of this LT kit, so there's a reservoir of oil there that, that can, of, of course, work its way through the one-way valve and pump up the lifter. But uh, we bring the, the plunger down or the piston down so that it is essentially just above that limited travel spacer or washer. Um, and then uh, we, we will bring it down so it touches, and then we back it off one full turn, so six flats. Um, and I'll go through that procedure here actually on a bike so that uh, we can understand better how to do it in the real environment. So with the limited travel spacer uh, installed, you have the benefit of a, a solid lifter with the quiet uh, performance of a hydraulic lifter. We're going to talk about uh, uh, adjustable push rods here. SNS has two versions of adjustable push rods. Uh, we have the standard push rod here, which is uh, the cheaper of our push rods it, uh, in a twin cam. It installs without removing the rocker boxes. Basically, it would have to go up and in, and you need to remove the tappet cover. Okay, so not too inconvenient. Uh, very feasible, at least you don't have to remove the rocker box. We also have the quickie push rod, and if you can see how the quickie push rod collapses much farther than the standard push rod. And the advantage of that is, of course, that you can install it without removing the tappet cover. Okay. The standard push rod, also uh, on an Evolution engine, you would have to remove the rocker boxes to use the standard push rod. So uh, if, a, if a guy switches to the Quickie, you certainly uh, have a little bit more expensive push rod, but you, you certainly will save the money in labor uh, without the added expense of, of removing the rocker boxes and, of course, the tappet cover on a twin cam. The SNS uh, push rod kit comes as you see it here, and it has these... Uh, uh, tubes and of course the, the clips. The tubes that come with it are necessary because the stock tube is substantially longer and of course since it's longer you can't push it up far enough on the motor to be able to get at the adjuster underneath here. And I'll kind of show you right here if that tube, if the stock tube was in this scenario you would cover up the adjuster and you wouldn't be able to get at it. Okay. So when you buy a set of SNS push rods, they, they come with a set of tubes so that uh, you can basically install them without taking anything else apart. All right, we're going to go through the procedure to adjust push rods, install and adjust. Um, I've already got one push rod in here, uh, kind of for a visual purpose. But uh, first thing you do uh, before you install a push rod or, or start adjusting them is to make sure that you have the cam or the cylinder that you're going to install the push rods into on the base circle. Um, and how we do that is basically we, we raise the vehicle with the proper jack, uh, pull the spark plugs, and put the uh, transmission in high gear. Okay, so to find the proper location of the base circle on, the, on say, the rear cam we're going to set up for, I'm going to watch for overlap on the front cam. Okay, so I want to know when both of these lifters are moving. I'm just going to spin the rear wheel. And the outer lifter is, of course, the exhaust, the inner is the intake, and right now I have them both moving, okay? And, of course, I could see that this one was not moving at the same time. So 
I have the front uh, front cam on overlap, the rear cam is on the base circle. Now this particular engine has a set of SNS Easy Start cams. And what that means is on the exhaust uh, lobe we have the compression release trigger. Okay, so if you were to put the cam on the base circle and, and actually stop on that trigger, your valve or push rod would be opened 20, 25 thousandths, okay? And that would give you an erroneous uh, adjustment. So what you need to look for on the exhaust push rod is that you're not on the top of that trigger. And what we'll do now is we'll put in the exhaust push rod and I'll show you that we're not on that trigger or we'll look for that to move. So I got a set of, of quickie push rods here, uh, SNS tubes. I have my O-ring in place, uh, top and bottom. I'm going to slide this in place, extend the adjuster and, and run it down until we uh, basically feel the push rod get tight in the cup of the rocker arm up in the box and of course the cup in the lifter. And that's what we would call, you know, zero lash or run them down until you have no, no lash or up and down movement in the push rod. Okay, so I can feel the, the push rod. You can hear it moving there. I have a little bit of lash and I back it out just a little bit and I can feel it getting tight. Okay, and then there's the adjuster nut that I held up as I was moving the adjuster down. So that's right there ready to be snugged up. Okay. These, uh, these push rods have 32 threads per inch, so my target is essentially 20 flats or um, three and a third turns, okay? So I'm going to uh, hold the bottom part of the adjuster and I'm gonna turn the top part of the push rod 20 flats when I go to adjust it, okay? First, we're gonna show you the compression release um, setup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this push rod real quick so we can see it kind of move up and down. Throw a little white marker on here for you. Okay. Now we're going to look for the little bump of the compression release. Right there it was. So you move up and down ever so slightly. You can hear it click actually too as it goes past the lifter. So I'm rotating the motor forward and the wheel of course in the direction of, of normal rotation. And as I see that, now I'm going to rotate it forward, as I see that lifter go up and come back down, I know I'm on the base circle of the cam and then I am past or not on the uh, compression release trigger. So now I'm ready to adjust this, this rear cylinder on the exhaust and the intake. Okay. So using a quarter inch wrench on the bottom of the adjuster and a 7 16 wrench on the push rod, I'm at zero lash. I'm going to take this push rod and extend it 20 flats. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 20 flats right there. Now, knowing that I'm at the right adjustment, I'm going to grab another 7 16 and I'm going to tighten that adjuster nut. Okay, now one thing you'll notice of course right away is that what we did by adjusting that after we got to zero lash we have compressed the valve spring and of course opened the valve. So right now the valve is open basically a hundred thousandths because that's what we uh, lengthen the push rod by. So slowly over time here in the next few minutes this lifter is going to squeeze the oil out of it. Okay, that piston's going to go down to the center of the adjustment 
and this push rod is going to start to spin freely. Okay, and that is important to note because before you can move on to the other cylinder, you must wait for this thing to, to bleed down or what will happen is your valve will actually open farther than it should because the lifter hasn't collapsed and it will contact your piston, bend your valves and ruin your day. So wait for it to bleed down. You should be able to turn it with your fingers. Uh, that's, that's a good, and I certainly cannot turn that with my fingers. So while I'm waiting for this one to bleed down, I'm going to go on. Uh, actually, I've already adjusted the rear one. So that one we can see is I can spin with my fingers. So we wait for this one to bleed down and then uh, we will rotate the engine so that we have overlap in the rear. Verify that we are not on the easy start compression release trigger and adjust the front push rods, install and adjust. Okay, it's been about five or seven minutes now and, and the push rod are, and is free spinning with my fingers so the lifter has collapsed um, so we can move on to the front cylinder. Now if we had the limited travel kit installed in this lifter, um, we would have done the adjustment differently um, kind of as follows. We would have adjusted it down the 20 flats and uh, waited for the lifter to bleed down, okay, giving it mm, five to seven minutes, maybe 10 minutes. Give it, give it a half an hour if you like. Um, just give it plenty of time to bleed down. And so once, you, once you've given it the time to bleed down, you start to back off the push rod and when the push rod gets free, um, in other words, uh, the spring has closed the valve and all of a sudden the push rod now has no resistance on it to spin, uh, you'll be able to feel that as you back the wrench off. And so you count backwards from 20 flats, 19, 18, generally at 18 flats, okay, the LT kit on a twin cam at 18 flats will, will start to come loose. And so from that, you are now bottomed the piston is now inside the tap, it is now bottomed on that, that LT kit, that washer, and you're going to back the adjustment off one full turn or six flats. Okay, so back it off six flats, lock it down, um, and when you're done with the assembly of the rest of the bike, fire it up um, and give them some time to pump up. So while we're waiting for these push rods uh, and lifters to bleed down so that we can spin them, I uh, want to just take some time to talk about uh, a variety of products that are out there. The, the, you could have push rods from any manufacturer with whatever threads per inch and uh, a lifter from any manufacturer as long as it's a hydraulic one with a, uh, a given amount of travel. We don't know what it is, it doesn't matter. Um, but you, you should be able to adjust uh, hydraulic tappets on any V-twin not knowing what the threads per inch is, not knowing what the travel in the lifter is by simply getting the cam on the base circle, making sure that you are indeed on the base circle. Uh, like we mentioned here, if you have easy start cams, you have the compression release trigger to contend with. Make sure that you're not on that trigger. But as long as you're on the base circle of the cam um, and uh, you've taken the lash out of the push rod, then basically what you want to do is adjust that push rod longer, okay, and adjust it, you know, 20, 40 flats. Uh, start start small so that you make sure you don't open the valve too far but basically you can keep lengthening a push rod and, and it may take you longer to do this procedure but uh, if you don't have the instruction sheets or you can't get on the tech line and, and get answers then this is a way for you to do it yourself so as you adjust that push rod out okay and it bleeds down if it spins you're not on the bottom of the travel of the lifter okay if you adjust it out and you've waited a half an hour and the lifter uh, doesn't spin, so you've waited plenty of time for it to bleed down, okay, and it doesn't spin, you know you're on the bottom of the lifter. So you start backing off that, that push rod until it starts to spin freely, okay, or the resistance from backing it off gets easier or reduces. So at that point, you know you're at the bottom of the lifter. You, you've counted how many flats you went down and you've counted how many flats you've come back up and uh, at that point, you know, say you adjusted it down 40 flats, okay? You backed it off 10, so now you're at 30 flats. Well, 30 flats from zero lash is the bottom of the travel of that lifter, okay? So if you want to be in the middle of the travel, you back it off another 15 and you lock it down. So that, that could be applied to any lifter and any pushrod combination uh, imaginable on a V-twin.
Okay, now that the uh, lifter has bled down, I can spin the push rods, both intake and exhaust. Uh, it's time to uh, put the uh, extend the push rod tubes and put the clips in. So. Down the bottom. I just have a, a skinny straight edge screwdriver here, or standard screwdriver. And uh, the supplied push rod clips that came with the push rod tube kit from SNS. And I basically stick it in there and sweep like so. Get the top and the bottom, you know, seated in the O rings, and then uh, put the clip up against the top tube and spin them in. Okay, now for the hard one. connector out of the way. And that's pretty much the end of a push rod adjustment and installation.